Okay, uh, my name is Nathan Metcoat, and I've been working on the um, turret for our robot. Our turret is going to have plus minus 180 degrees of yaw and a uh, pitch varying from 30 degrees uh, shoot angle to 80 degree shoot angle so that we can, uh, our strategy for this is to be able to shoot while driving and shoot anywhere within our line zone. So our ball path for our turret right now is this is the size of the ball. It's gonna be, so we have two flywheels. This is a flywheel and this is a flywheel. And then the top flywheel is on a hood so that the top flywheel can move um, up and down to change the pitch of which we're shooting at. Um, so that's how pitch works. And then there's also gonna be some rollers along here so that the balls um, get fed out and launched out here. And the compression of those wheels, so right now, the compression is about a centimeter on each side, um, which is still quite a bit of force to push it in, but we, we did some tests with this setup um, at 3,000 RPM. And right now we have two different size flywheels. One's about 3.5 inches, one's about four inches. And the idea of that is to get some top spin on the ball to get a good, um, loft so that it drops in nicely. Um, and then this is how we plan on yawing the turret. So that, that assembly I showed earlier would go on top of this and then the whole thing would be able to rotate plus minus 180 degrees um, so that the wires don't get snapped and then balls feed up through there into here and then that hood would be on here and it'd shoot up better. All right, so in terms of software, we were mostly just prepping kind of all the stuff that we want to kind of start getting done tomorrow. A lot of things we kind of had to hold off on because some of the vendor libraries weren't fully up to date and we were trying to get all of our software up to date and there's kind of just some conflicts. So we kind of more focused on getting like the, the base structure down. So one of the, the main things that we're trying to work with is data logging. It's something that, ed, or that mechanical advantage of 6328 put out with an advantage kit and we're just trying to implement their logging software and so that's kind of been uh, a bit of a challenge because we're kind of trying to figure out how to lay everything out because it kind of requires moving things around but it kind of has some pretty great advantages in terms of data replay and kind of being able to rewatch games or kind of it helps with laying out simulation stuff as well so uh, it's pretty handy there but uh, our main goals tomorrow will be to get uh, some code running up on the robot and hopefully starting to test some mechanisms and ideally getting photon vision running so that we have a working kind of vision system to start integrating by day three. So uh, that's about it. So we are using a uh, passive active hook climber to be able to try and climb up to the very top rung. So this is a, um, a sort of model of the passive hook. So, it'll, the, so the, um, the active hook will bring it up, it will bend back and land on there. And this bending allows it to stay hooked onto the, um, the pole as long as, no matter what the robot swings around. And it also allows, it to, allows the robot to swing around separately from the hook. So then the active hook can go up, go to the next rung. Uh, and it'll be on either side. There'll be one active passive hook on either side of the um, elevator, and the active hook will be in the center. Um, we're gonna have the active hook on the this part of the elevator, so this part will extend over to 28 inches, which will make us uh, give us the ability to climb onto the first rung, and it'll also make sure that. After we climb to the third level, it's uh, pulling our robot enough that it wouldn't be the bumpers would be above the second one. Okay, quick update about building the field. Um, today we mapped out all the parts that we need. We took first official um, practice version of the field and we struck it down to as met as few wood parts as we could, which came out to three um, four by eights and then twenty one um, four by twos, um, four by two planks. 
Um, all, um, that including what we already had in stock was enough to build the field. One thing to keep in mind about the field that we're going to be doing is that we're swapping out the, for the um, like hopper thing of the scoring mechanism, we're planning to swap out the plexiglass for just cardboard. The reason we're doing this is because plexiglass is kind of expensive for our team's budget, um, but if your team wanted to do cardboard, it's a decent thing you could try, but keep in mind that the plexiglass will flex and move very, very differently from cardboard, as well as having very different friction properties. Um, between the game piece and the cardboard. So it won't be necessarily be a super reliable um, stand-in, but it'll be good enough for us during Robot, Robot in 3 days. Well, we wanted to use a turbine um, as a sort of indexer in, or in order to uh, feed our turret. <clears throat> the turbine is going to spin as it collects balls, and each ball fills the spot as they fall down from the, our upper storage trough. And so as the balls come through, they'll feed the turret. Um, I did a little bit of prototyping with uh, wood. Yeah, okay, well, so, and the prototype went well, um, it all worked pretty smoothly, even when it was kind of uh, in wood and janky, so it seems like a really promising concept for, like, the final robot. CAD-wise, we got far in progress today, um, there's, we decided with five spots for the uh, index, and we have a, we'll have a, a funnel on top of this to give us more storage space. It's all powered by one Neo down here and then it will go over to this area where it exits towards the turret. All right, so this is our intake. Uh, we were kind of challenged with a small space to build it with obstacles and wanting to extend as far out from the robot as we can. So we played around with different mechanisms and we came, with, came up with this idea. So it starts off in the stowed position and it is still under the 22 inches, so it's still able to go under the trench. And then when we're ready to deploy, we, it goes outward until both are parallel, and then it'll be able to compress the ball enough to bring it up through the chute, up, and then into our indexer. My name is Alexander Tong, and what I think one of the bigger strengths of our RI3D team this year is actually what we did before the game reveal even dropped. Uh, we have a number of different leads that are responsible for managing different components of our RI3D team, uh, and I was the integration design lead, uh, which kind of involved seeing, overseeing our design process. Um, so I think a really thing that is helping us out a lot uh, as we're putting together a robot vision and putting to together different components of it is having like a seven-step design process with its own deadlines and timelines and guidelines that we're following. Uh, one thing that helped a lot, I think, this year was to start with a strategy and make sure that um, all of our team members fo focused on strategy before designing the robot. Uh, the way that we did this is we split into uh, about six different groups um, and we kind of essentially designed six different strategies and then presented about them uh, and then designed six different robots and presented about those. Uh, and that allowed us to kind of have a whole bunch of ideas from different people. Um, in different groups of people, figure out, look at what is powerful in the game strategy, what points score you the most, uh, what are the penalties, looking at that first, then designing robots. Uh, and then when it came to deciding uh, robots, we actually merged similar robots together, uh, encouraging our team members to uh, kind of take the best parts of different ideas and different robots and essentially merge them into uh, a more succinct, complete uh, robot vision. Uh, and after that, we voted on it. Uh, we ended up having uh, essentially two winners of our vote because we had two robots that were somewhat similar. Uh, so we actually merged uh, a couple components um, through like a group vote um, from those two robot ideas. Uh, and then we ended up with a, uh, a final robot vision. Um, so right now we're on the prototyping stage. Uh, and we're just putting together different mechanisms to uh, essentially go along and follow that robot vision. Um, some of the things that helped us get to that eventually was like different templates. Um, for people to fill out that had a number of like guiding questions like uh, where does, if you're making a strategy, where, do, where are you prior, prioritizing certain capabilities over others? How does offense and defense impact this? Uh, all sorts of uh, planning there. Uh, and then a template to put together people's drawings and uh, summarize strategy and the mechanisms and the most interesting features of each ro robot archetype uh, that people designed. Uh, and then we got to our, you know, our final uh, designs with even some rough CAD going on <laughs> during the uh, design process for people to kind of show where different mechanisms will be. Um, then we got to three different robots. Uh, two of them essentially were, were selected 
uh, by our group members, and then we merged a few ideas of them after doing like pros and cons list of each robot. Uh, so we have a number of different designs. Uh, we also have the design uh, presentations for each recorded, if you want to take ideas from essentially different uh, robot architectures that our uh, members designed. Um, and now we're right here, we're putting together the different uh, prototypes knowing that the vision of the robot is to have an intake at the front, an indexer in the center, a shooter in the corner, and a climber at the back. Uh, that was like the most important part that we figure out and that we don't just like uh, immediately start designing the different components without knowing that we, where they go. It was important to have a vision uh, for where those different components are going to go first. Uh, we have a number of overall requirements of like, you know, how the whole robot needs to be under 22 inches, of course the weight, weight rules, uh, where other things go, uh, and we're figuring out uh, who gets what motors and what are our goals for each night, and we are we're very organized with it this year, uh, and we're going to use that to make sure that we finish on time with plenty enough time for programming at the end.